I mean, how life changes. You beat cancer, and now you've got a family and a growing brute. Mm. Pretty cool story, isn't it? It's amazing. <laughs> um, yeah, you don't want to write a story like that, but uh, now that I've been through it, I uh, definitely think I'm a better person now and uh, obviously have a bit more appreciation on life and um, even a little bit more patience to probably what I did in the past. Footy's not everything. Uh, you know, when you get drafted, you're a 17-year-old boy that leaves the country. You move up here and you think it's just footy, 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 but then when you go through something like this, I guess you, you understand that it isn't everything and there's a lot more to live for than just two hours on a weekend. What did you know about cancer when you were diagnosed? Oh, that it's pretty scary. Um, even, the fir even the first initial one on my lip, I guess I didn't really think too much of it because it was cut out and I was back playing within two weeks. But, you know, the second time when the doc said we're in a bit of trouble and initially I thought there must be a spot on my body, uh, you know, like a, a, a freckle that was in a bit of trouble. But um, when he said there's four tumours in an organ, um, it's pretty scary initially, for sure. So the doctor says, initially you've got a melanoma, you have it cut out, and you think you're through it all, and then yeah. you know, in May, a year later effectively, it's in your lungs. Yep. What's the decision making that you start going through with your doctor and Sarah? Oh, I can almost relive it moment for moment. We're told on a Monday at four o'clock that it's in my uh, lungs. By 4.30, 5 o'clock, I'm ringing Geordie Lewis, and he said, what's going on? And I just broke down straight away. Get back to the footy club, home that night to tell Sarah, because I didn't know how to tell her on the phone. I'd tell Sarah, and then, you know, the following days, it's, righto, what treatment do we have to go through? What, what's available for me, and, and how do we best attack it? Your oncologist, uh, Grant MacArthur from Peter Mac. Yep. Was he the one that suggested trialling some drugs that had been through clinical trials? Yeah, so initially, uh, you're thinking chemo and radiation and these type of things, but when he mentioned a clinical trial, uh, you, your first thought is why and, and, and what are the benefits, but the trials had been positive and that um, it was having a good effect on people. It's like, right, you, I trust you guys where well, you are, you're trusting them with your life. I'm ignorant, but I mean, what effectively is a clinical trial? Something that they can't say that has been working for a long time because I think for mine it was only two or three years that had been uh, founded and, and then used uh, on humans, I guess. And of course, there wasn't enough research to say that it was having a great effect, but it was positive early signs and, you know. You're happy to take the chance. Well, of course, if you're hearing that it's, it's positive news and that it was working, of course you're gonna give it a crack. If I didn't, who knows if I'm even here. The drugs you used are now approved, are they? Yeah, yeah. And saving yeah. lives weekly. So at the time when I was uh, on them, I think there was only two or three people that were on the uh, trials at the hospital and, and now when I go in there's a, a backlog of you know and, and countless amount of people that are on the drug which is just great because it's showing that it's, one it's working and two that it's saving lives which is great. So with the clinical trials who actually can participate in them? Yeah so a lot of people think that if you have an illness it's only available uh, to the people that are sick but in actual fact uh, it's for anyone really that's open to being a participant and willing to try different trials that could benefit uh, not only people that are sick but also seeing what it can do with people that are, are fully healthy and, and raring in life. You stayed positive throughout. How'd you do that? Um, well, I didn't look at Google. Um, <laughs> no. And that's one thing that you can get caught up with doing, especially with, you know, that was one thing I told Sarah so straight away. I said, don't look at Google because if you do, you'll think the worst straight away. For me, I was lucky because I had the footy club and, and with them, uh, they knew straight away how to deal with, you know, I'd, I'd get there and I'd do what I needed to do and no one really treated me any different. Um, whereas sometimes you'd walk the street and you understood, you'd get pointed out and say, oh, that's that footy player with cancer and, and you could feel just the eyes and whatnot. But I, again, I treated it like a foot injury. I thought, right, if I'm out for six to 12 months and that's what I have to deal with, knowing that it could have been, um, initially we thought we were gonna be out on this on a treatment for two years. That's just how I've attacked most injuries, whether it be the Achilles or knee, and even this, it, it, it's weird, but you do, you treat it like a foot injury.